Hello everyone, welcome to 4.5 alternating series. Uh, the definition here is that any series whose terms alternate between positive and negative values, we call it as an alternative series. So let me write out the definition here. The alternating series can be written as summation n1 to infinity negative 1 power n plus 1 bn and if you were to expand this, this will come out as b1 minus b2 plus b3 minus b4 and so on. Or you could have it as summation n1 to infinity, negative 1 power n bn, in which case we start with a negative term, negative b1 plus b2 minus b3 plus b4 minus and so on. So in these cases, you know that bn is greater than or equal to 0 for all positive integers n. So now we have an alternating series test and this test will test for convergence provided we follow those two conditions. So let's go down and write the alternating test series. Sorry, alternating series test. <laughs> the alternating series test says that if we uh, had summation negative 1 n power, power n plus 1 bn or summation negative 1 power n bn, you know, this would converge if we had these two conditions. One, that 0 less than or equal to bn plus 1 less than or equal to bn is true for all n greater than or equal to 1 and the limit of bn as n approaches infinity is 0. So this helps us to um, get the convergence. And uh, if you recall in 4.4, uh, the previous section, we uh, also saw limit comparison tests which uh, helped us to decide if uh, um, a and bn would converge, diverge. So we would call upon that also uh, in addition to um, this test because this test is for convergence but if we didn't get this test to work then we might have to call upon divergence tests okay so here's our first problem determine whether the series converges or diverges And so we have the first um, question within it. Summation n 1 to infinity, negative 1 power n plus 1 over n squared. Okay. This means we have to now first identify bn because the whole point is about bn, right? Because the negative 1 part is uh, the alternating part. That's where the sign alternates. But Bn is where the terms generate values. right? So we have Bn to identify. So we can see that the negative 1 power n plus 1 is in the top and n squared is in the bottom. So if you were to separate this, let me write it out here. If you wanted to separate this with the negative 1 separate from the other terms, then it's going to look like this, 1 over n squared, right? And this 1 over n squared will be your bn. And so we have identified bn, and we need to now compare bn plus 1 and uh, bn. So for that, let's first write the bn that we have identified, which is 1 over n squared. This means bn plus 1 would be 1 over n plus 1, the whole squared. Now to check the first condition, the first condition says um, 0 less than or equal to bn plus 1 less than or equal to bn. So let's test that. Put it in the format we have 1 over n plus 1 the whole square less than or equal to 1 over n squared. And then check if this is true. So just test it with some n values because we are told that uh, if you come back here, for, this should be true for all n greater than or equal to 1, right? So try when n is 1. When n is 1, what happens? Uh, when n is 1, it is 1 over 2 
the whole squared, right? 1 over 1 plus 1, 2 squared. So it's 1 over 4, which is less than or equal to 1 over 1 squared. So 1 over 4 is less than 1. So that is good. Then try with n equals 2. So 1 over 2 plus 1, 3 squared. 1 over 9 is less than or equal to 1 over 2 squared, which is 4. 1 over 9 is less than 1 over um, 4. So if you did that test, you see that it's true uh, for um, all n greater than or equal to 1. Now let's move to the second condition, which says limit bn as, as n approaches infinity must be equal to 0. So let's go ahead and test that. bn is 1 over n squared. And we know that um, 1 over n squared, right, as you allow, n is in the denominator, so that's good because that will make the entire fraction become 0. And so this is equal to 0, we can see that. That condition is also satisfied. Collectively, this implies that our series n summation 1 and uh, summation n 1 to infinity negative 1 power n plus 1 over n squared converges so we successfully used the alternating series test let's go for the second problem summation n 1 to infinity negative 1 power n plus 1 n over n plus 1. This is our problem. Again, try to separate the negative 1 from the other terms so that you can easily identify your bn. So summation n 1 to infinity, negative 1 power n plus 1, times n over n plus 1. Right? So this implies our bn is n over n plus 1, and therefore bn plus 1 would be add 1 to the n, right? So 1, n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 1 over n plus 2. So now let's test the first condition. 0 less than or equal to bn plus 1, less than or equal to bn. Let's set this up. n plus 1 over n plus 2, less than or equal to n over n plus 1. Now what, again, test it with different n values. So we just test it by the side here. When n is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 over 1 plus 2 is 3. Less than or equal to n is 1, right? So 1 over 2. 2 over 3 is less than or equal to 1 over 2. See if this is true. So you can, you can always use your calculator to do this. Or you could uh, adjust the denominators to be the same by taking the LCD, right? In which case, this would be 4 over 6 less than or equal to 3 over 6, right? So is uh, 4 over 6 bigger than 3 over 6? That's the question. Or lesser than 3 over 6 is the question. So go ahead and uh, compare the numerators, right? So you get that, um, of course, the 4 over 6, the 4, the numerator, is bigger than the... 3 in the numerator on the other side, but then the setup is incorrect, so it is false. So it, it fails for n equals 1. Then try if you want it. If you're not convinced, try for n equals 2. So that's going to be 2 plus 1, 3. So we say this is wrong. Okay, we just, okay. So and when n is 2, that becomes 3 over 4. And n is 2, right? So 2 over 3. Again, um, you can compare them by using uh, the calculator and getting their decimal values. Okay. So again, for uh, f you know, just for variety, I will try um, the calculator options here. So what you get is three over four is 0 0.75, and two over three is 0 0.6. That repeats. So clearly, 0 0.75 is greater than uh, 0.6, but then the setup is incorrect. So then you come back and you say it is false false statement in fact bn is bigger than bn plus 1 I, I apologize bn is smaller than bn plus 1 right 
And so we have um, the first condition not satisfying. Okay. In fact, if you look at the second condition, limit bn, n approaches infinity equals zero. That's what we should get. And if we were to apply the limit for bn, which is n over n plus one, yeah. So you can divide by n, yeah. And what happens is when you divide by n, up and down, we get limit n approaches infinity 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. And then when you apply the limit, you actually get 1 over 1, right? 1 over 1 plus 0, so 1 over 1. And so that just becomes 1, which is not, I shouldn't box it. I meant to say 1 is not equal to 0, so the condition is not satisfied here as well. So we'll put an x here, we'll put an x here. The condition did not satisfy. Therefore, we cannot use the alternate, uh, alternating series test. Okay. This implies we cannot use the alternating series test. Meaning we couldn't prove that it converges, right? Bn converges, the series converges. And so let's uh, try a divergence test, okay? So the divergence test uh, told us that if you took the limit and it didn't come out to be zero, then it diverges, right? Because we just found out that limit bn was not equal to zero, we could use the divergence test. So I'll just say using divergence test. I know there's a lot of tests, but uh, we have to kind of... Um, in, try to uh, keep them all in, in track so that we know if one doesn't work, can I use a different test? So the test says if limit a n, n approaches infinity is equal to c, some number which is not equal to zero, then it implies that summation a n diverges. That was the, um, the divergence test. And so in our case, we need to use the use the series with the alternate uh, t alternating term so this implies limit n approaches infinity negative 1 power n plus 1 n over n plus 1 right we just saw that you know if you had the negative you just saw that here in the con second condition that without the negative 1 just the bn bn part uh, approaches 1 right when n approaches infinity and because of that, when you have the alternating uh, alternating sign there, it could either be negative 1 or positive 1, but it's not going to be 0. So we know that this is not going to be 0. And therefore, it implies that the series, negative 1, n plus 1, n over n plus 1, diverges. Now let's uh, talk about remainders in alternating series. And we do have a definition for that. So consider an alternating series that satisfies the hypotheses of the alternating series test. Let S, capital S, denote the sum of the series and Sn denote the nth partial term. Okay. So for any integer n greater than or equal to 1, this is capital N, the remainder Rn is s minus sn, right? So the total uh, sum of the series minus the, um, the the sum of the nth partial sum. So s minus sn gives you the remainder rn. And then that satisfies absolute value of rn to be less than or equal to bn minus 1. Okay. So remember, remainder usually is to do with error, right? To minimize the error. Uh, so we, we want to uh, find the error estimate or the remainder estimate to uh, determine um, a bound on the error and so we're going to look at a problem based on that. The question reads, use the remainder estimate to determine a bound on the error R10 if we approximate the sum of the series by the partial sum S10 and this is the series given to us. Again look at the question, use the remainder estimate so that means you know, you know that this is the remainder estimate. 
And we're going to use this to determine a bound. Okay, so if I can find the bn plus 1 value, that becomes the bound, right? On the error R10, and they're kind of telling us what that capital N should be because it says R10. If we approximate the sum of the series, the total S, right? If we approximate that sum of the series by the partial sum S10. So uh, this is given to us. So uh, we have, let me take you to the previous problem, which was in which we did this uh, same series. We found that summation um, n1 to infinity, negative 1 power n plus 1 over n squared followed the uh, alternating series test and it converged, right? So we, we, did, we concluded that that series converges. It's the same series that's given to us here, right? So we know that the series converges and therefore we can actually use the remainder estimate because if you come back to the remainder estimate um, definition, it says the alternating series that satisfies the hypotheses of the alternating series test. That means it must, um, if it satisfies it, it must converge, right? That series must converge. So it satisfies the test. Both the conditions were satisfied. So let's call upon that. We'll say in the previous example, we established that the alternating series test passes. Therefore, we know that we could use the remainder uh, estimate. Therefore, absolute value of R capital N is less than or equal to B N plus 1 must be satisfied. And in this case, our N is given to be 10. So R absolute, absolute value of R10 should be less than or equal to B11 because 10 plus 1 is 11. So now let's investigate B. B N would be 1 over N squared, right? So uh, in this case, if we were to find B11, then I have to put 1 over 11 squared, which is 1 over 121. And uh, absolute value of R10 should be less than or equal to this BN, uh, B11 value, which is 1 over 121, which is approximately 0.0082644. You can go on, but we stop there. And so we say this is the remainder estimate for this for the given condition. So we'll just say remainder estimate for a bound on the error R10. Okay, so the remainder must, must be less than or equal to this value. Next we talk about um, two kinds of convergence. We have an absolute convergence and a conditional convergence. Let me write the definition and we can go over it together. For absolute convergence, it says a series summation a n n 1 to infinity exhibits absolute convergence if summation absolute value of a n converges. Okay, you see the word absolute and you see the absolute val uh, value symbol. You make the connection there. So it exhibits absolute convergence if the absolute value of a n converges. And uh, it's conditional convergence if summation a n um, converges but then the absolute value, summation absolute value of a n diverges. So you see that condition there, right? One converges, the other one diverges. So there is a conditional convergence when you have that split condition. All right, so what we understand from this is that absolute convergence actually implies convergence, right? Because if it's absolute convergence, then you know that a n converges. So let's quickly write that here. So we can say absolute convergence implies convergence. So in mathematical notation, we say if summation absolute value of a n converges, right, that's the absolute convergence, it implies summation a n n 1 to infinity converges. 
So if I wanted to show um, convergence for an, it's fine if I just showed convergence for absolute value of an, right? And uh, and so that established that establishes that connection. However, with conditional convergence, if absolute value of an diverges, and if just the summation an converges, then we have that split condition that makes it conditional convergence. So this is true only for absolute convergence. Okay. So let's take a look at this problem. Determine whether the series converges absolutely, conditionally, or diverges. So now we have summation n, 1 to infinity, negative 1 power n plus 1 over 3n plus 1. Okay. So remember it's uh, about a n, and if I can show absolute value of a n to converge, then I can um, prove that a n converges absolutely. Um, however, you see that it's a fractional setup, right? Because you see the alternating series here. So we can um, uh, consider um, them in kind of two parts, okay? So what we could do is, um, let's take summation, or let's take a n, right? We see it as b n usually, but here the definition was in terms of a n, so we're just using a n. Previously, we called this b n, which would be just the term without the n plus 1, I mean, without the negative 1 power n plus 1, okay? So this... Um, this is what we called as bn, but because we're using the notation an, an would be the entire thing without the summation. So I have to bring in the whole thing. An is negative 1 power n plus 1 over 3n plus 1. This implies if I were to take the absolute value of an, then I have to take the absolute value of negative 1 power n plus 1 over 3n plus 1. This brings in the condition that the numerator, negative 1, where the fluctuation in the signs, the change in the sign happens, would now be eliminated because of the absolute value. Absolute value should always return a positive answer. And your n in the denominator, your n is all positive values, right? A positive integer. So 3n plus 1 in the denominator will always be positive. So this would simply come out as 1 over 3n plus 1. Because you can't have the sign changing in the top, it has to be always positive, so it's going to always be a positive 1 over 3n plus 1. Okay. So now we can use the limit comparison test. Okay. Now remember, we took the entire a n. Okay. Um, so if you wanted, you could try the b n. Um, you could see it as b n and apply the, um, the alternating series test. Yeah. We can certainly try that and see if that works. Okay. So here we go. So what I'm uh, trying to explain here is, if you, um, okay, let me let me pull that here. Okay, if I took the b n, remember the b n would be just one over three n plus one. And if I did the alternating series test, and uh, if the test passes, and, and it, the, if the test passes, it proves that this series, right, summation, this whole thing, uh, converges. So we're good there. However, uh, we cannot establish if it is conditional or absolute without talking about this absolute value of an, right? So we can establish for just the, for the entire series, whether it converges or not. But we cannot establish if it's conditional or con uh, or absolute without talking about a n. So that therefore, I will go ahead and proceed with a b n. Okay, that means b n plus one would be one over three n plus one plus another one. So it's one over three n plus two. And uh, let's also con compare. I mean, um, check the first condition, which is zero less than or equal to b n plus one less than or equal to b n. And um, that would be 
0 less than or equal to 1 over 3n plus 2 less than or equal to 1 over 3n plus 1. Uh, test it with some values. So when um, n is when n is 1, it will be 1 over 3 plus 2, 5, less than or equal to 1 over, when n is 1, right? 1 over 4, okay? So you know that 1 over 5 is um, 0.2, right? And this is 0.25, so 0.2 is less than 0.25, that's looking good. Then try when n is 2, so when n is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 2, 8, when n is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 1, 7, okay? So, you know that 1 over 8 is 0.125, okay? 0.125, and this will be 0.1428. And so you have, again, the condition working, right? Point one eighth is smaller than 1.7. And so the condition is looking good, so you got that. And then go for the second condition, which says limit bn as n approaches infinity must be equal to zero. So to test that condition, 1 over 3 n plus 1. And you know because n is in the denominator when n approaches infinity, and you apply the limit, this becomes zero. And so this condition is also satisfied. Um, this implies by alternating series test summation n1 to infinity negative 1 power n plus 1 over 3n plus 1 converges okay so we establish the converges and uh, if you um, if we want to show that it's uh, absolute convergence we have to show that absolute value of a n over here right the one in blue absolute value of a n we need to show that this converges okay if this converges then we know that it's absolute convergence if this diverges then we know it's conditional convergence okay um, we there is we know that the series is not divergent because we were able to show that a n converges so the third condition because the question says determine whether it converges absolutely conditionally or diverges so this condition is ruled out diverges condition is ruled out because a n converges we just need to worry about absolute value of a n so uh, to 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 check if absolute value of a n converges or diverges we are going to use limit comparison theory. Okay, so I'll just say um, to let me just write it out here to determine whether absolute value of a n converges or diverges. We use the limit comparison test. We saw this test in 4.4, the previous section, and according to that test, we actually have three conditions, but then you'll have to compare, right, limit comparison. It compares uh, AN and BN, um, meaning it takes a ratio. So limit of AN over BN as N approaches infinity, if it is not equal to zero, in, you know, it, then we can say both AN and BN converges or both diverges. If it is equal to zero and BN converges, then we say AN converges. If um, it's equal to infinity and BN diverges, then we say AN diverges. So we had those three conditions under limit comparison test in the previous video, in the previous section. And so we're going to call upon that to uh, make our decision because that test is really kind of covers things for us, right? Whether it's convergent or divergent. So let's um, uh, compare AN, I mean absolute value of AN because that's what you're trying to use to compare which is already 1 over 3n plus 1. So compare this with something we know, okay? So we know that um, because there's an n in the bottom with no power, I'm choosing 1 over n as, the, as an appropriate comparison, okay? 
and uh, you can already imagine what bn when you know uh, series the series summation n 1 to infinity 1 over n which is your bn uh, would happen to it we know that it is going to be a divergent series 1 over n diverges um, one because it is a harmonic series um, the the other one is that you also know that it is um, using the p series right p series uh, test tells us that uh, when p power p is one, less than less than or equal to one then the series diverges so, so we know information about bn and therefore we are able to choose this one so i'll just quickly pull that out here and say summation n 1 to infinity 1 over n diverges by p series so we have to recall what the p series was because the p was the power for n and the power is one so now we have to now see if the limit comparison theorem or test rather to you know shows whether it's convergent or not all right so limit n approaches infinity and you're comparing a n absolute value of a n over b n by taking their ratio and we like this um, comparison test because it allowed us to use uh, L'Hopital's rule because of the ratio setup to help us find the limit when the limit uh, gave us indeterminate form values. Okay, so 1 over 3n plus 1 over 1 over n. So if you um, took the numerator times the flip of the denominator, that will give us n over 3n plus 1. And now we have to divide by n. You know, this is the rule we use because we want the n to go to the denominator when you have n approaching infinity. So we certainly want um, to divide by n. n over n is 1 on the top. 3n over n is 3 plus 1 over n. If you divide each term by n, this is what you get. And this is nice because you now have 1 over n becoming 0 and the result is 1 over 3 when you apply the limit which is not equal to 0. So if you go back to your limit comparison test you can uh, you can see that actually there are three conditions right. So the first condition is satisfied because the first condition is that we get some other limit which is not equal to 0 and if that's the case then we will say both summation a n and summation b n will diverge or both will converge. Right, so we previously established that where are we? One over three n plus one, right? This one, one over three n plus uh, one. This uh, this whole thing converges, right? Mm. Oh, I apologize. Uh, previously, we established. I'm over here. Previously, we established that b n one over n. This thing, summation one over n diverges, right? Because that is established, we know that the a n also absolute value of a n also must diverge since we know from from p series that summation summation b n which is summation 1 over n diverges. If this diverges, the other one, absolute value of a n, also must diverge. That's what the first condition says in limit comparison test. So this implies summation n 1 to infinity absolute value of a n, which is summation n 1 to infinity um, 1 over 3 n plus 1. Also diverges. Okay. Now we're going to bring these two information together. Okay, we found that we found that the um, the alternating series, the entire one, right? So this was your a n. So we found that summation a n converges, but that summation a uh, absolute value of a n diverges. Right? a n converges and there it diverges put these two details together and you get the conditional convergence okay 
So we say this implies since summation n 1 to infinity a n converges and summation n 1 to infinity absolute value of a n diverges. This implies summation n 1 to infinity. An converges conditionally, or you could use the language there and says and say that it exhibits conditional convergence. Okay. And so remember again, uh, what we were trying to do here was we used the uh, the alternating series test to establish convergence for An. However. We could not tell if this converged conditionally or absolutely, and for that reason, we had to find what, hap what happens to absolute value of an. And in order to do that, we went for limit comparison test. Okay. We'll try another one. Same thing, determine if it converges conditionally, absolutely, or diverges. cosine of n over n squared. As a first step, we will determine what a n is and what absolute value of a n should be, and then figure things out. Okay? So a n is this whole thing, cosine n over n squared. Absolute value of a n would be absolute value of cosine n over n squared. Now, with cosine n, we know that um, cosine of an angle, right, the value that it produces, will always be less than or equal to 1. And because of that, we can use that condition uh, to, to compare, okay? So, here we go. Um, now, remember that this is not given to us explicitly as an alternating series, right? Although cosine can take positive and negative values, so we know it will alternate. Okay, but uh, your um, your n are all positive integers, and so it's not like regular angles that you're used to uh, to, to to determine what the value should, would would be from the unit circle. Here too, we're using that, but uh, you're going to use the calculator because your n is all uh, positive integers. So we're going to just um, you know use the familiarity of um, the, the property of cosine. So I'll say note that absolute value of cosine n is less than or equal to 1, right? If you didn't have the absolute value, then you know that cosine can go as far as negative 1. But because we throw in the absolute value, we know that the upper limit for it will always be 1, any value less than or equal to 1. So because of this, uh, we can use this to compare if I would divide by n squared on both sides, because that is what we have here in our given problem, right? Again, this is a nice uh, approach because we know that the right side of the inequality, right, this one, we know that this one, when when it comes as a series, Remember, this is the P series. You know, this converges since P equals 2, right? The power is 2. And so the P series um, uh, property tells us that this will converge. So if this converges, right, then we can use the comparison test, not the limit comparison. This is the comparison test because, as the name says, limit comparison would have the limit and then the ratio. The comparison test allows us to see that if this is, if this converges, right, if the right end converges, upper limit, then this also must converge, the left, the left inequality. So then we say, this implies, by comparison test, summation n 1 to infinity absolute Again, the absolute value is true only for the numerator, isn't it? 
as the denominator is n squared, you always get a positive uh, result from the denominator. So we know that this converges to. Now, if your absolute value converges, we know that the series converges absolutely. So let me take you back quickly here. Remember we said if the absolute value of absolute value of a n converges, then it implies summation a n converges, right? So absolute convergence implies convergence. So if you come back to the definition, we said the series will exhibit absolute convergence if the absolute value converges. So we just established that the absolute value of cosine n over n squared converges. So this implies summation n 1 to infinity cosine n over n squared converges absolutely. And uh, this was a case where we did not use the alternating series test or other uh, methods. We just used the comparison test to establish that absolute value of a n converges and therefore the series converges absolutely. Uh, thus we have come to the end of 4.5 and uh, I will see you in the next video with 4.6. See ya!